So I, what I'd like to do now is go straight into um, the first session, which is the nautical tourism industry. And uh, could I ask Damir Davidovich uh, to come up here, and also Bujani Shani, the former uh, president of Albania. Um, I should tell you all, by the way, that we have a countdown clock here. And um, so if people go on for too long, I can always call their attention. Uh, Damir, the floor is yours. Yes, please. Uh, Damir Davidovic is from Montenegro, a Secretary of State for the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism. And um, like so many people from Montenegro, he towers over me. Um, yeah, and I think that you have a future in basketball. Uh, <laughs> wherever you like, sit down or be here, it's entirely up to you. Wherever you like to, wherever you want to do your presentation. No, the floor is yours. You decide. Okay. I am your servant. And President, please come and join us here. Mr. President, does your attention? Well, good morning, everyone. I have to say immediately that you know, guys from institutions do not like the clocks, but having some parliamentary experience, I'll try to keep it short. So allow me first to 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 thank you for the invitation. And I'll do it, I imagine this fairly quickly. I'll inform you a little bit about Montenegro, Montenegrin tourism, about the capacities that we have on marinas, about some of the investments that we have in, in the country that has actually transformed and actually, first of all, create the possibility for development of strong development of modern nautical tourism, but development of Montenegro as a touristic destination. For the last 15 years after regaining independence in 2006, uh, Montenegro has the growing number of tourists and the growing number of overnights. Tourism is very important for us. It represents 24% of the Montenegrin GDP. And the times are good. We finished last year with close to 20% of the increase in the number of tourists and some 13% increase in the number of overnights. 56% of all hotel beds in Montenegro are in the four and five star hotels. We have some 460 hotels and 44,000 beds, so to say. And of course, standing here in Germany and giving you all these numbers that honestly does not seem a lot, but for the ones who don't know, Montenegro is a country which is of, whose size is 13,000 square kilometers and we have 625,000 inhabitants. Besides being that, that uh, small, we are also seeing one, some of the most important brands being present in Montenegro. Last year, only we opened up 49 new hotels. Uh, some of the, we are also home to some of the largest investments in Mediterranean. Just in the Bay of Boca, the three largest projects, the total investments uh, are more than 3 billion euros. When you put that into the context of our economy, which is 4.8 billion euros, it really tells a lot. And I'm not speaking about probably dozens of other smaller projects. Uh, last year we had, Montenegro was visited by some 5,000 yachts. We have 293 kilometers of the shoreline. We are very proud on the Bay of Boca. Bay of Boca is the, the, how to say, the place where all of these large investments are currently being developed. Uh, it is, we like to say, the only fjord of Mediterranean. It's under UNESCO protection. Kotor, the city of Kotor is also under UNESCO protection. And honestly, in a very small, space, you can find everything from Roman mosaics to Austro-Hungarian fortresses to the old cities with a very long and traditional naval history. Regarding the marinas, the, the great change in Montenegro happened immediately after independence when we signed in 2006, the government signed the contract. And we saw, uh, when we were speaking about development of tourism, we wanted to see a sustainable development. So what we have done in, the, in, in some locations, that were military locations, that were, in, that were industrial locations, military shipyards, gear, uh, barracks, and so on, we decided that we want to transform that. So the first contract was for, signed in 2006 with Porto Montenegro, and they opened in 2010, expanded in 2015. Currently, they have 460 berths. They have, the plan is when the marina is finished and the whole project is finished, is to have 850 berths. Out of, those well, out of those 850 berths, 311 will be only for super, yard, super yachts, which is 
going to be the biggest offer in one place on Mediterranean. In 2017, they were awarded the first platinum-rated marina by the Yacht Harbor Association. Uh, last year, they had increase in the in the number uh, in the length of the yachts that were coming to their to the marina for approximately three percent, but the duration has increased for some for 60 percent from 33 to 53 days. They are continuously investing. Last year, marina had 14 percent more capacity than the year before. What we are also very proud of, and besides uh, the similar project to this one, is that Porto Montenegro, together with Damen, are now have the contract, and we are expecting them to create the yacht, Montenegro Yacht Service in the, just across from the bay where we had a traditional shipyard. That, that, uh, that, that place is currently being cleaned to make it sustainable, to having in mind that it was a shipyard, it was polluted to a certain level, but it is being cleaned now and we plan to have that Montenegro Yacht Service. The second project, and altogether Porto Montenegro as such, it's not only Marina, it's a project in which has been invested so far around 560 million euros. The other one is Marina Porto Novi. It, is, it was opened last year, just at the end of the summer. It has 238 birds. They can receive up to 120 meters long yachts. Uh, what is interesting with regarding to this project, it's also that it's a touristic project. The total value of the project, they began with 280 million euros, but now they are over 980. Out of those 980, some 600 has already been invested. We are expecting for this project, they opened Marina last year, this year we expect them to open the only one and only resort in Europe, which is going to be very, of course, high-end. And what is interesting, their, their position is close to the entrance in the Bay of Boca. So, having in mind the other projects that we have, so in 2023, on the entrance of the Bay of Boca, on one side you will have one and only resort with the marina, and across from them you will have Ritz-Carlton Resort, because this is also the project that is being developed. Lustica is another one of, that's the third of those projects. It's investment on 1.3 billion. So far, some 200 million has been invested. The plan for the marina is to have 176 birds. Currently, they have 85. They also provide the firm maintenance and service. And at the end, we have the port of Kotor. <clears throat> Kotor, as I said, it's the old city under protection of UNESCO, great naval heritage. And they have the capacity, the city marina has the capacity of some 200 birds and to receive the yachts of up to 50 meters. Now, what is very important comparative advantage of all of this? All of these marinas are up to 15, 20 minutes, from five to 25 minutes away from the airport the airport of Tivat, which is an international airport. Also, they are 60 and 80 kilometers away from additional two airports, one of them being the airport of Podgorica, our capital city, and another airport of Dubrovnik, which is internationally very well known. What is also interesting, we have a couple of other marinas, Marina Budva, which also we have a beautiful old city. They have some 528 berths, and it covers 62,000 square meters. There was initiative from their side to modernize the marina. It is being currently considered by the government, but definitely the huge potential because this is the marina which is again next to the old city, next to the beach, and it is, its location is in the city of Budva, which generates 40% of all tourist income in Montenegro year on year. Another one for the old uh, port city, I would say, is in Marina Bar which has 450 birds, birds and, some 100 to 400, and some 250 dry birds. It's a traditional port town. They also have excellent history. They have the old town and tradition. Every, you will notice every city that I mentioned on the Montenegrin coast has an old town, but it's really like that. It's a huge tradition of, of trade and, and naval history altogether. We have some smaller ones. The last one which we are expecting to be open is the one also in the Bay of Boca with some 100, 156 birds, and it's Lazure in Meline. We have a plans for a couple of smaller marinas, so to say, and all of our uh, spatial planning has created preconditions to have on the sides of Montenegrin coast from the south, Dulcin, where we have uh, beautiful sandy beaches, to the north, where we have the city of, of Herceg Novi, where the Porto Montenegro is being located, to create four more marinas with an average of 150 birds. And this is all the technical data, but what I would like to say, because I'm sure I have used most of my time, 
is really what this has meant to us and how do they, this continue, contribute to the economy. For us, it is important to say that because this, what everything that I have just mentioned and all the investments that are going on, they represent the materialization of the vision that the government had some 15 years ago when we went into this project. Their importance for our economy is immense. The moment when the contract for Porto Montenegro was signed and the moment in 2010 that the marina was opened, it really created another be benchmark to which we have measured all of our future successes in Montenegro. It helped us a lot on visibility. It helped us a lot on sending the message because anymore we were not talking about the government policies and strategies and we were not talking about the projects in the pipelines. We're talking and people will be able to, will, were able to see that we have a modern new marina that represents a new standard of how we see the development of this kind of industry in Montenegro. That also helped us a lot in bringing in the brands to the country. I mentioned some of them. The newest one is the one and only the, the, the one the first came was a man, Ritz Carlton, Hilton, and all the region, and so on and so on. Again, when you see the size of the economy, you tend to get surprised that you find so many investments, so many brands, so many things going on on such a small, on such a small area. It has created a lot of new jobs for our economy. Uh, it has created, uh, you were mentioning right now, creativity. It created, it was, it helped us to, to work with the tourism industry to become more creative. For the sole reason, as I mentioned, all of these, except Lushnica, all of these locations were all military locations, and that was the mindset that we had in these places, you know, that if we are not fixing the warship, then there will be no pay, there will be no jobs, there will be no development. And obviously, after 10 years, everyone can say that this is definitely not the case. From what we have seen in the last year, last 10 years, is that the number of the yachts is on average increasing. Of course, you have years where this increase is really great. You have the years when this increase tends to slow down a little bit. But all, all together, we are speaking about truly positive developments. So I think that was in Thank short you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.